what's the most fun you can have on a range DPS spec and these are so exciting that my voice just squeaked just now and we're gonna be looking at all of the range DPS specs in the world within beta and rank them all based on the fun factor how it plays with the hero talents kind of a little bit of what the damage is so we're gonna hit it right off and uh, just to talk a little bit about Rage DPS in the War Within, because fun is important, sometimes more important than damage. And we're starting with Affliction Warlock, which, well, there's a caveat to mention here. You will be spamming Malefic Rapture in Mythic Plus, and of course you're going to be using that in Raids anyway. But as far as Affliction goes, it's surprisingly way more fun. This has been one of the spec that kept us from doing this video earlier, because it kept changing man the talent positioning in the talent tree kind of rotated and changed quite a bit if we're gonna talk about each build that had some talent changes for affliction we're looking at about five six maybe seven i don't know how i, I don't count out loud so overall at this point of recording affliction is really 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 fun damage aside it's well it's actually kind of destroying the meters at the moment i don't know if you can see it in our latest uh, gameplay of affliction it is nuts and it actually works really well with both your talents actually hellcaller is the one that's a little bit too overtuned but if we're looking at soul harvester which is surprisingly fun as well the damage seems to be a little bit more in tune with the rest of the dps specs but still actually doing a lot and it's wonderful to see that we don't have to ramp up or keep up a lot of the plates although vile taint is not as good as shadow crash yet and we're still not there to be able to maintain that agony for its entire duration however with some of the talent changes where you can refresh agony early doing a lot of aoe damage we're luckily not going to see vile taint do that anytime soon since they want us to individually tap target agony which is not necessarily a bad thing because if all range dps specs had what this one button that just applies all the dots all the time then might as well not have dots at that point so i'm still a little bit on the fence but overall with all of the hero talents and the tier set affliction is actually really really fun i'm gonna be putting it into a tier which is very very good for affliction considering that it hasn't really ranked very high a lot of the time and showcasing the fun of affliction is even easier with today's sponsor outplayed outplayed is a desktop app that records your gameplay lets you edit and clip it and use it for your social media content creation platform or simply personal use and it's all free click the link down below to get your install started right away and you will be supporting the channel as well once you install it, you will be able to fully customize it based on your preferences. You can leave the capture mode to full session and have the app work in the background without any need to start or stop it yourself. Manual mode lets you do the old fashioned way where you start and stop the recording yourself or even use it smarter systems which work for other types of games where you can set it to record just your online matches or highlights. Thanks Outplay for sponsoring this video. And now back to augmentation aspect that's been very hard for me to rank because I'm not a big fan of its play style. I never particularly liked it. It's fine. It's normally on, you know, in Dragonflight. It's a little bit bland, it's a little bit boring, but so is Red. But the difference is that Red does it way better than augmentation. But in the War Within, that changes. There are a couple of things that change, and I think we mentioned this in previous videos, but in case you haven't caught those yet, one of the biggest changes that augmentation has gone that is a major quality of life improvement for average and below average augmentation evokers as well especially those that don't want to use weak cars because it's silly is that you now get a buff i never remember what the buff is but its icon is a blue reptile eye essentially what this buff does is you keep it kind of on you all the time and it shows you when people use their main offensive cooldowns it kind of lights them up with like this little spotlight thing and you can actually aim with breath of eons and things like that to make sure that you buff them properly it shows them currently on the open world model, not in the frames of your character to kind of, you know, if you use mouse over macros, if you want to click their party or rate frames to know. Maybe that's something to be considered for the future because it's good if you're using for like prescience. Prescience, I'm never going to get this right and it's going to be an un a continuous meme. But in terms of Breath of Eons, knowing their location in the open world definitely helps so you can travel to them and actually hit them with the Breath of Eons. 
And taking both your talents into consideration, it is really fun, way more fun than it is on live. I am a particular big fan of Scale Commander being able to redirect the breath and I really like the breath playstyles and it will come to matter a little bit later into the video, I wonder why. But overall, it's just a much better situation. Now, I don't know the power of augmentation yet. We've, uh, you know, played it, we've tested it. It doesn't seem like it's that overbearing as it is on live. However, for our level of playstyle, it's kind of hard to push keys. And uh, I'm seeing a lot of people struggle with pushing keys because the dungeons are just overtuned. So it's hard to tell how augmentation will do in like peak content at the moment because the dungeons are very imbalanced still and raids are a little bit you know, hit and miss because also raids seem to be overtuned in some aspects and a little bit mech on other aspects and raids usually get even more tuning than Mythic Plus uh, before a season starts. But this time the, the ball has been dropped on Mythic Plus tuning, period. So it's hard to judge these from like a meta perspective, but augmentation in terms of fun is still there. I will put it into B tier. It's not quite Affliction Warlock level, but it is way better considering for me, it used to be kind of like a bottom tier uh, fun spec, which uh, is F here. Normally we have it all the way to D, but that's okay because Balanced Druid is neither or is it? I am very subjective with Balanced Druid and I do want to preface this by saying that, listen, maybe Balanced Druid might not find this to be the case with them as well. But as far as I'm concerned, Balanced Druid is probably one of the biggest losers this tier. And maybe it's not that's terrible, but I do want to put it into F tier to drive a point home into how balanced Druid is. And especially if I have to compare it with some other specs coming in this list, it's definitely... I wish there was a lower tier than F to showcase my disdain for the balanced tuning. But once again, not gonna dwindle too much on it. It's just my personal opinion. I don't like particularly how you still have to play in Mythic Plus with over dotting a lot of stuff. If Affliction has Vile Tame and shadow has shadow crash twice to actually put and even to a lesser degree elemental has magma totem why isn't balanced druid getting anything like that you could say that sunfire just applies it in aoe but it's a tight aoe and usually pulls don't just happen instantly and then the tank just gathers them all instantly into one ball unless they use grips and that's like once every three or four pulls if they aim their grips properly and still for instance vengeance grip does not have the reach of let's say i don't know blood decay grip thing so you still have to top tap target dot a bunch of mobs and then still have to go into your eclipse or cooldowns and then start doing damage the ramp up time is way too high for a spec that lives in a meta where everybody just blasts in two seconds after the fight engaged that is not particularly fun and it's also very hard to test how it actually performs and how it feels if you really want to get that engagement from your rotation because we're not talking necessarily damage here but you know being able to not have tank level dps is also part of the fun because if you have tank level dps and you're still having fun then you need to call me because you're doing it right i don't know how you're doing it but i need to have some level of damage i don't need to be broken and do double or triple everybody else's but you know not tank level and listen bouncer does not have tank level damage it can do really good damage and it was also recently buffed and will probably still be buffed by the time the game releases. But the rotation and the gameplay is just terrible. I have no idea if I'm even using hero talents except for the Keeper of the Grove where I just have to pop trees, which is a button that I'm aware that I'm popping and is not a button that I'm particularly excited about considering how many cool things balance could do. And I'm saying could do because the cool things that balance could do have gone in the past, have been removed from the class. And that's the main reason as to why I don't like it. I don't know what the vision for balance Druid is because we don't know. The devs haven't illuminated us it's like, okay, we don't like Arcanic Pulsar because of this. We don't like Ravenous Frenzy from Shadowlands because of this. We don't like Convoke being good because of this, even though they have essentially buffed Convoke a little bit. But I would be surprised if we still play it because Convoke has been buffed in the past and we still haven't really played it. And I kind of love Convoke, but it's just like a small part. I feel like Balanced Druid is just missing a lot of interactions, a lot of cool things mattering and not actually being terrible for people that play low keys or average content because they're never going to be able to do their damage out. And I still don't see how Balanced Druid is going to be a particularly good raid spec at the moment considering that they keep nerfing its single target with Power of Goldrin being nerfed most recently. 
And this is only relevant because I have main balance druid in 10.2 and it was the first time I had to swap from it because I just felt with my skill level that I was just not performing at a raid level, at a mythic raid level level, let's say. So that's the story of balance druid and with arcane. So you cannot play arcane mage and still play the same video game as balance druids are playing. I don't know what the mage devs are doing back there at the Blizzard HQ, but uh, <laughs> I want in because you guys are living life at level 11 out of three total levels. That's how high arcane gameplay is. Dude, it's so good. Not to mention that we've been talking about a lot of the specs and a lot of the hero talents not having proper animations. Dude. Splinter Spell Slinger, Splinter Storm, and all of the splintery things for Arcane Mage are is so good in terms of the visuals. You know when things are happening. And not only that, I'm not talking about, even though the damage is good, I'm not talking about the overbearing damage that you might see because this footage is done just before the Arcane nerfs. And I don't think the Arcane nerfs are going to change too much in the sense that makes Arcane bad. But it's just fun to play. Doing damage is very important, but also... The rotation, the procs, the weaving in of the spells, how Touch of the Magi has been changed to make it more accessible for a lot of other players and how the rotation has been changed to be more uh, reliable for other players to pick as a spec and doing damage in any type of content is incredible. The change to Arcane Missiles is so fun. The fact that Arcane Barrage consumes Nether Precision in AoE is incredible. And Arcane Blast is still a little bit boring and I think We've had some nerfs to some of the capstones that are still haven't been buffed yet and you're not really going to be playing them anytime soon. So I'm hoping that, okay, nerf what's overbearing for Arcane, but you know, buff the other ones to be kind of competitive as well. That would be really, really cool. And even Sun Fury is incredibly fun. It just takes the basic Arcane and it gives you probably a lot more power. I don't know which one is better because we can talk about Spell Slinger being over overtuned and that's going to go down. So once they're equally tuned i don't know which one is slightly better i think splinter storm is just slightly more fun if splinter storm is s tier maybe sun fury arcane is bottom s tier or top a tier or something like but you cannot go wrong with arcane or mage or is it mage we'll see we have two more specs to go but we're gonna go into beast mastery first beast mastery has received a lot of changes throughout the beta after its rework as well has been seeing some tuning it's playing way better. I think it lost a lot of the two-pointer nodes. I don't know if it still has two-pointer nodes, but it used to be, I think, the only spec in the game with three-pointer nodes. And going from that to the current version of Beast Mastery is just incredible. There are some downsides. Like, the playstyle of Beast Mastery is fine. It's just solid. It's good. It hasn't received, like, mage-level changes, even warlock-level changes to its interactions and its procs and anything like that. Uh, so it's not gonna rank it. It's not gonna you know go very high and to be fair There's another thing that's gonna pull it back a little bit in terms of the overall fun and engagement now And that is of course the hero talent We still to this day haven't seen any major changes to Dark Ranger considering that Dark Ranger was one of their selling points for uh, The hero talent system when they've announced the war within at BlizzCon and it's I say this mostly as a meme because I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm still gonna say it's with the risk of it being a meme, but Dark Ranger is probably the worst hero talent in the game currently. It's one of the most boring ones. It feels like it has anti-synergies with Beast Mastery for sure, but probably Marksmanship as well. And Pack Leader isn't any better either. I would have expected Pack Leader to at least have Stampede level pet interactions, but we're not even getting there. We don't even have Stampede anymore. Granted, the, the class talent tree is exquisite for all hunter specs you have actual defensives now you have actual capstones and you're not just going to pick the same capstones you can actually go into more more options barrage is ironically and memingly fun i do have to say some of the most fun i've had with beast Mastery was when i blasted barrage barrage is probably not a, a, an amazing ability but it does give you trick shots now i haven't played beast Mastery in a while because things haven't really changed and i haven't seen this change being announced yet still but Barrage giving you Beast Cleave for, for Beast Mastery. The problem is that Beast Cleave starts at the beginning of Barrage and it doesn't get refreshed through its duration. It would be great if, uh, you know, Beast Cleave could retain its full duration at even at the end of Barrage so that you can actually go into some different parts of your AoE rotation because Barrage is still a channeled ability 
And doing casting barrage, you you know, you waste some of that time not using barb shot, not using kill command and things like that. And having to cast multi shot right after you come out of barrage, just to extend the beast cleave so that then you can continuously go with barb shot and kill command kind of takes away from what the, the quality of life that this ability could, could bring. But other than that, there's not much to say. Just because I like Beast Mastery, I will be putting it in front of Augmentation. But the Hero Talents are terrible in terms of its fun component. The actual spec hasn't changed that much and we still don't have enough pet interactions to make me feel like I'm an actual Beast Mastery. And summoning a pet that just pops on my target and not actually rushes to it doesn't have any visual impact except just pop in there. It's not, that's not Beast Mastery for me, I'm sorry. You, there could be a lot more things that could be done way better for Beast Mastery. Demonology is also kind of solid. It has some of the issues for me that Balance Druid has where they've gave us some really interesting versions of Demonology that were some of the most fun I've had in, in World of Warcraft, even more fun than Mage, but they took it away. I can understand why they took it away, particularly the old Doom version where you snipe targets and you just spam Doom Guards left and right because it was a little bit degenerate. However, removing it completely and making it the way it was live was not the way for me because spamming Doom Guards was another way to play Demonology that we don't currently have. And that was great because I could just focus on getting a lot of Doom Guards out and maybe not even use Implosion, even though that's still like a core mechanic for Demonology and it's probably still on your bars. But having my focus swap to, okay, I want to get these big pets that just shoot AOE Shadow Ball volleys all over the place. That is a thing that Demonology isn't doing anymore. Not even actively because with the change to Doom and I think it's, I don't know if it's called Doom Brand, but that's the current tier set and that's the version of Doom that we have. It's all passive. Sure, you use your Doom Ball procs or your Demonic Core procs to actually, you know, accelerate the ritual and particularly get more Doom Guards out because now it's a chance proc, it's no longer guaranteed. But it, outside of that, it's just all passive. If it happens, great. If it doesn't happen, great, not great. But you're still not changing anything in your rotation. And that is a major loss in terms of demonology. And I understand why they changed, but I would have loved to see them try to make it work instead of taking it out of the game because playing a version of Demonology that was S tier in terms of fun for me and now playing a, a very downgraded version of Demonology because also we don't have Pitlord and Nether Portal and that for me is also fun even though I understand that it's not for everybody but these are cool thematic things that Demonology can do that's not just summon your dogs, make your big pet do more damage, the end. That's just the same Demonology as always. Sure, Vile Fiend is actually cool and it's actually a legit capstone and thank God for that because at least something, at least something, but overall in terms of fun, Demonology is, I, I cannot even realistically compare it to Affliction, it is better than Beast Mastery though. It is still fun and it's, I want to say slightly more fun than the current version of Demonology in AoE. In single targets, it's, I will probably find it particularly boring, you're probably not going to be playing Doom Guard in single target, you're probably going to be playing Gloom Hound in single target, which that's the only redeeming factor, but everything else is probably going to be just the same. And why? Why keep taking away fun from specs? Why not making it work? That's just disappointing. This show Warlock, in a similar situation, it has some good things going for it. Specifically, I didn't talk about hero, hero talents for demonology because they're good, but they're kind of the same for the other two specs. So I think it's probably better to just address them with, with destruction because it feels like the potential with destruction was bigger and it got lost, particularly with, I believe it was, Hellcaller that gave you stacks of Ruin that accelerated your Overfiend uh, proc chance and it gave you more shard duration in AoE, which was very, very, very fun gameplay. That has also gone. Okay, this is currently the third spec that had a really fun playstyle and it's been taken away for the purpose of balance. I don't want to necessarily have degenerate ARPG gameplay with all the specs and just spam one button and just do billions of damage, although that necessarily wasn't the case, not in an average content level at the very least, but continuously playing a spec that's really fun and then taking away aspects that are fun for it out of the spec, it's obviously going to diminish the reception that it has in terms of the overall, you know, enjoyment factor. I will put Destruction a little bit above Demonology. I actually like the Cataclysm into Channel Demon Fire little gameplay loop that's more interesting. We used to play that, I believe, was it season, was it season one of Shadowlands? 
for a very brief moment before we just went into Inferno again. I think it was even before Inferno was buffed to what Inferno is today, where it, well, well, actually to what it is today in Dragonfly, where it used to give you shard generation. But now you're probably never going to be playing Inferno, which is weird because before you were never going to be playing Cataclysm. Now you're definitely not going to be playing Inferno anymore now that the shard generation has been moved to the Overfiend, which is great because we still like that shard build up throughout the AoE encounter, but I feel like it's been just downgraded. Dimensional Rift doesn't feel like it's interesting at all. Um, and I think Dimensional Rift is probably just going to have to be a damage button because there's no real interaction. You just pop it and it does things. It's visually very pleasing, but unless it does like really high damage, there's no real, real reason to think it's fun in any way. It's just a button that you press and nothing interacts with it properly. Moving to Fire Mage, one of the me most memed spec on our channel and I think all in the mage community in general, it is also an S tier. It has actually dropped slightly below Arcane for me because Arcane just like exploded with the recent changes, uh, no pun intended, but Fire is still incredibly fun and an amazingly designed spec. And I lost some of its explosiveness with Lit Fuse and with Living Bomb, and the damage was also kind of nuts, so I don't know if that would ever have stuck with Fire Mage, but the changes to Living Bomb were actually felt, and, and if, it was a cool thing to know that you did a lot of Living Bomb damage, which is something that Fire Mage has lost over the years, and it had to be nerfed, and now it seems like it's going to be a playstyle where you want it in low target count scenario, maybe in smaller keys, maybe this could be the future of Fire Mage in low keys where people have been memeing that you cannot play Fire Mage in low keys at all because you don't have time to build up the damage, mostly uh, around Ignite, and we're probably shifting from that world. And that is a great thing for Fire Mage because having the option to play, let's say, hopefully it doesn't get changed too much, but if Ignite remains an option to be played in super high keys where you use that priority target damage to actually nuke those Lieutenant mobs, which are terribly terribly threatening in in mythic plus in the war within and i'm assuming it's going, just going to get harder once the season launches and then still cleaving into aoe i think that's good if they give living bomb a better damage profile for three five up to up to maybe like eight targets at most better damage than ignite then that can give uh, like low level not low level players in terms of their skill but people that don't push content as highly and a chance to actually play fire mage in keys and i feel like oh my god well if i'm not playing a 12 13 14 then i'm not doing any damage like that has to happen and i think that's that's a tool that, and a potential that fire mage has it's probably going to be based on tuning i think the living the lit fuse proc chance has been reduced a couple of weeks ago um but you're not actually playing the capstones at all on beta right now from what i understand because they're just not competitive enough in terms of damage However, after checking some of the most recent uh, cooked up builds for Fire Mage in the Fire Mage Discord, I think you actually end up playing all of the capstones in content. You can play uh, Hyperthermia and left side capstones a little bit more into single targets and raid scenarios, while you can actually go with Explosive Oil, but also Blast Zone into AoE scenarios, but particularly with Frostfire and having axes and builds that take all of your talents is the perfect spec to me, almost as perfect as Arcane. To be fair, actually Fire Mage does builds and talents way better, Arcane is just more explosive and has a more engaging rotation period, but they both really deserve to be an S. And now we come to Frost Mage, a spec that's been overlooked by uh, by the devs, and I didn't really want to do that. Ah, psych, it's S tier 2! I don't understand what's going on. I, I think there's this mage overlord that's controlling my mind to kind of put out all of this mage simp content because I have never been a mage player, but Jesus, Frostfire Frost Mage is, <laughs> is, is nuts, man, with the playing with the coldest snap and firing the freezing orbs and comet storms back to back to back, getting instant procs of Frostfire Bolt and if you can find the time to squeeze in a glacial spike, you will <laughs> melt things period frostfire is not as great design as the other two but in terms of fun is ridiculous how many procs you have how many instant spells you have how little you actually hard cast anymore and when you do hard cast it matters quite a bit you can even play ray of frost in aoe because you're probably going to be playing a single target but i also play without ray of frost and it was just incredible because i th sometimes just don't have the time to, to 
press all of your buttons and that's something that not a lot of specs can say that they can do guys i for the last time i really hope that i'm saying this for the last time please the devs that are working on mage can you please work on the other classes as well you guys are the show stealers of the war within it's not even close there are other classes in specs that are doing really well not as close to mage but they're doing way better than the other, the rest of them but mage mage is just great man mage is just a fun time to be playing world of warcraft and i really hope that other classes and specs are inspired by the type of design and the type of interactions and procs and damage profiles and talent builds that mage get and just be placed into other classes as well because it's just a shame to all of them existing in the world within and the world of warcraft but to actually just play so differently at a, at a, at a fun and engaging level marksmanship is similar to beast mastery where the rework has done a pretty good job at making it a little bit more fun, a little bit more engaging. I wasn't incentivized to play marksmanship as I wanted to be. Uh, as, a, as a hunter aficionado, it's great. It's just real solid and I think it fixes a bunch of issues that marksmanship has in terms of talent positioning, talent buildups. As far as I understand it, I could be wrong, but overall, I feel like marksmanship is in a much better situation than it is in Dragonflight in terms of fun at the very least. Sentinel is the saving grace of hunter in terms of hero talents not because it's doing broken damage which i don't know if it still does it has been nerfed and where before when on marksmanship you would see either sentinel or there's like a resonating symbiotic thing another talent that does a lot of aoe damage you would see it top the damage profiles of hunter now it's no longer the case so it definitely feels like you know play your hunter and you're doing your hunter damage and the hero talents aren't carrying your damage profile that's great I still feel like it's missing the mark on something. I would have loved to play a Dark Ranger marksmanship as pretty much the 90% of the Hunter community. That's just, that's just, that's just gonna hold it back massively. I'm gonna be putting it between Beast Mastery and Augmentation because of the hero talents in general. Dark Ranger is a big miss. Black Arrow, to be fair, Black Arrow was supposed to be a survival marksmanship type ability as far as I used to play with it back in the day, as brief as I did. And it's just not there. The hero talents are definitely pulling it away from being what it could be. And I feel like even the spec tree could have a lot more death added to it. Because you do play a little bit better, but you kind of still play pretty much the same. Unless marksmanship is, are going to go into heavy win arrow usage. I Also, another thing that I'm not yet sold on is still wailing arrows. And I have mentioned this in the past. Where wailing arrow essentially replaces aim shot after I think 20 wind arrows at this point and you just fired it off. We've had that similar situation happen to survival where flanking strike replaced kill command and people didn't like that and they asked for it back. It was a bigger impact on, on survival, but I don't think it's doing any justice to it, marksmanship either because Welling Arrow had a unique place in, in your kit. I, I mean, when I played marksmanship on Dragonflight, I used to pick it uh, specifically in season one. But it was mostly a utility thing, you hardly ever used it for damage, but it was a unique hunter thing where you could fire it off. A very iconic Dark Ranger ability, by the way, and it's been delegated to a damage proc. which still has the AoE component, but you're never going to be using it for the AoE component, meaning that it might as well just deal damage. The AoE is just like, oh, if the targets that you happen to be firing it at happen to be casting, then you get to silence them, and that's it. But considering the mechanics of the mythic plus the way that they've changed cast sequences for mythic plus in the recent builds this could have been such a great addition to marksmanship to be able to handle and control the cast in the game that it's such a shame that's been delegated to damage proc because you're never going to be used you're not gonna hold it once you have it because you just want that good aoe silence moment you're not gonna do that you're gonna fire it off as soon as it happens and i believe that Wind Arrows is mostly a mechanic that happens for single target builds. I don't remember Wind Arrows ever being used in Mythic Plus, although maybe you've used it with certain tier that I might have skipped during Dragonflight, but it used to be baseline a single target thing. So I don't know what they're doing with Wailing Arrow. I really hope that they break Wind Arrow away from this particular part of the talent tree where it's just very heavily focused on single target. Ideally, we would like to probably see Wind Arrow in the Dark Ranger here town because it was a Beast Mastery thing. It's a very Dark Ranger thing. It's a, a Sylvanas ability. And to be delegated to still do damage, but also AoE silence. But we want to use it when we want the AoE silence because I feel like that will definitely put, if not Hunter, but marksmanship on the priority list for having specs into Mythic Plus to handle those range casters. 
Devastation has been a big surprise for me and I think we've probably ranked it before in terms of how good the, the rework and the design was. In terms of how fun it is, funnily enough, it's been more fun than Affliction and I don't rank Devastation funner than Warlock now in Dragonflight. The changes to the talents are getting better and better. We've just recently had some capstone changes and positions moved around. I love skill commander deep breath play like that is probably one of the coolest things that evokers can do that can make me forget i'm playing a, a, a 50 pound skinny gecko but flying across the battlefield and just blasting everybody with a dragon's breath that feels incredibly satisfying not to mention if you do decide to play flame shaper hopefully firestorm becomes a part of your playstyle because it has to you haven't played it almost at all throughout the entirety of dragonflight and i don't understand how you can design a spec that's supposed to be the poster child of an expansion with its only AoE ability in the talent tree not being used in AoE for an entire expansion. I know Eternity Surge cleaves, I know, but Firestorm is the AoE ability that you would get from the spec talent tree, but you haven't gotten it in Dragonflight. And I have played it deliberately with Flame Shaper. I don't know if it's going to be part of the meta AoE builds for Devastation, but I have played with it because I want it to be because that's how it should be. And it was so much fun and it ends up doing crazy AoE and it actually scales really well in high AoE situations, at least at the time of testing. We don't know how it's going to be in the end of season one, but it definitely has potential to put Devastation as a, you know, an actual spec that pushes high keys. I still see some issues with its survivability, and I believe that uh, Flame Shipper makes Renewing Blades uh, being able to apply to the nearest target, and if you're next to the tank, it applies to the tank, and that is just crazy. It, it, preservation puts that uh, <laughs> to, to, to much better use, but... You do have some options there, but still, I feel like the position might be a little bit squishier. And if the Mythic Plus tuning continues the way it is right now, it might hit some walls in survivability that I don't see going away unless some more tuning happens. Elemental Shaman has recently gotten a rework and it made it so much better. Way better than Devastation, to be fair, because I'm a, I'm a Shaman at heart. And it made the talent tree feel way more straightforward and way more intuitive. And with the hero talents, finally enough and rightfully so, you actually get to play both sides of the element. So you don't have two main sides, really. You have the fire side and the lightning side. With Stormbringer, you get to play Lightning Rod, and it is one of the most, if not the most, difficult spec to play in the War Within and World of Warcraft period, as it probably should be. Maybe a little bit too difficult in the way that you have too many procs and buffers to abilities that you have to weave in and it's not always clear which one you want to prioritize. So you will be once again delegated to reading guides online to figure out exactly how your rotation is. That's a shame considering that Arcane has done away with that by making it a lot more straightforward and clear to the player what you want to use. And here I'm talking about a master of the elements and ice fury like when you want to use them because ice fury now has been mega improved by the way where it's now a passive and it makes it so that your frost shock turns into ice fury as a proc chance and then it just makes your frost shocks really hit really hard now i don't know exactly in which builds you'll be playing each and those but i've played both the fire build is significantly easier and that's great if you want to get more elemental shamans and because a lot of people might find it challenging and rightfully so. It's not as degenerate as it is on live where you just spam lava bursts ever, always, but it actually is a proper elemental build with a lava burst focus. The hero talents are eh. Forest here is good just because it enables the fire build. I could barely tell that I was playing a hero talent with Forest here. That's not anything new and still being A tier just goes to show how baseline fun elemental is. I still think it could use a lot more work in terms of the overall hero, hero talent builds component what i do have to point out is that the break part of doc i was gonna say dr dre because i kept calling uh deep root elements dre 
because I thought it's funny and I know everybody calls it Dre and I figured every time I say it, I think of Dr. Dre and now it just, just came out. But having deep rooted elements and ascendance be separate just makes it way more fun with procs of ascendance and then actually using ascendance and Lava Beam is really cool. But it does feel like ascendance is just a fire build cooldown now and it feels like it has very little to do with lightning builds period and Stormbringer. So that's maybe something to take into consideration. And last but not least, Shadow Priest. And this one is one of the hardest to rank because Void Weaver could very well place it at top A tier, maybe even bottom S tier. But Archon is, I just don't like Archon at all. And that's not because of Halo. Halo is like the only thing Archon has going that it's fun. But outside of Halo, I struggle to figure out exactly what I'm supposed to be doing with Shadow. And it really feels like the only thing that Archon brings outside of Halo is Surge of Insanity and Mind Spike playstyles. I detest this playstyle personally. I have always detested this after the rework in Dragonfly where it didn't make it instant anymore when you got the Mind Spike procs and it made it a hard casted ability and it just makes me feel like Mind Spike is just a different version of Mind Blast. It is not interesting. It is not fun to play. It has very little interaction or close to no interactions at all with your spec. I don't like it at all. There are a lot of other things that Shadow does well in terms of the capstone playstyles being adjustable to the type of damage profile that you want. That's always cool. The theme of the old gods is really, 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 really great. It's really weird that Voidweaver does not play Mindbender um, in the builds that I've been able to snag from, uh, from the Shadow Priest community, although I, maybe I've missed the one that does. And I hope that there is one that comes because Void Wraith is just really cool. But I believe there's also a bug with Void Wraith right now where it just it doesn't behave like proper pets and just gets one shot all the time because normally pets have like insane defensives to not get randomly killed by AoEs in dungeons and raids and that's not the case maybe that's why Mindbender isn't taken by the by the priest community at the moment because having a one minute Void Wraith sounds really fun or even a shorter cooldown Void Wraith but that's that's the problem so I don't know what to do with Shadow Priest am I going to put it into S tier because Void Wraith is just really good with Entropic Rift and Casting Void Torrent on the move, by the way, I've tried to cast Void Torrent on the move with Archon and I just felt very silly. But Archon just being like around a C tier, fun spec for me, do I just like balance it in between the two and just, you know, try to average it out because that's not really fair because you could just have S tier level fun with Shadow Priest or you could have C tier level fun with Shadow Priest. So I don't know where to rank it, but because I actually don't like the rework and I don't like mines here being gone and I don't like mines back at all and it doesn't feel like they're going any way, anywhere, anytime soon, I will be putting it into B tier. I will be charitable enough and put it at the, at the top of the B tier with the caveat that it could be an S tier level fun spec despite the rework not being as great as it used to be personally for me. And before you make a decision on what class to pick, based on fun in the world within you should also check our melee most fun tier list that we've had posted about a week ago depending on when you see this on our channel right here and decide which are the winners and losers for you because of course they will be ranked based on our subjective opinion and it it feels right check it out